Good morning. Um, my screen is great. Yeah, okay. So I will change, I mean, to, to in, in acquired anemia and anemia in the elderly. So myelodysplastic syndromes uh, are indeed uh, diseases in the elderly with a risk of uh, progression to acute myeloid leukemia. But this is more in, in the what we call high-risk MDS. Here we're going to deal with low-risk MDS where the problem is mainly anemia, which is of course of concern in those elderly people. Because if they are regularly transfused, the problem is of course fatigue, quality of life, because the mean hemoglobin <coughs> level is low in those patients. So we tr tr try to treat them uh, by, by drugs improving the hemoglobin level. And the first line of treatment is generally erythropoietic stimulating agents like EPO. But they unfortunately work in only about half of the patients for a median duration of about, of about two years. Uh, so indeed, in those patients, there are limited treatment options, especially in, in Europe, where some drugs are, are not, second-line drugs are not approved, uh, uh, like, like hypomethylating agents. Uh, higher telomerase activity and shorter telomeres predict for, for shorter overall survival in, in, in those patients. So imetastat is, is a first-in-class telomerase inhibitor which targets cells with short telomere lengths and active telomerase and, and has shown clinical uh, um, activity in myeloid malignancies, particularly myeloproliferative neoplasms. So we're here with patients who are low risk, which is IPSS low and intermediate one, who have are refractory to, to, to ESAs, or who have a very high EPO level, baseline EPO level, which predicts a, a, a very low response to EPO. And actually, all, almost all the patients had received EPO. And those patients had to be transfusion dependent, and a high transfusion uh, 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 burden with at least four units every four weeks. And they, they should not have a 5Q deletion, because 5Q deletion is a specific type that responds in particular to lenalidomide. And they should not have received hypomethylating agents, HMA, or lenalidomide, which are drugs which, by the way, are not approved in, in Europe in this situation. So the primary endpoint was, was based on the usual response criteria, transfusion independence uh, uh, during at least eight weeks, secondary endpoints, uh, transfusion independence for at least 24 weeks, its duration, etc., uh, uh, including survival and, and, of course, safety. And we also analyzed the telomerase uh, uh, and, and, um, and uh, HTART uh, activity. So the, the patients, uh, 38 patients were included as, as, ex as expected elderly people uh, with, with uh, uh, who uh, were uh, two thirds of them were low risk, uh, one third intermediate one. And the transfusion requirement was very high indeed with a median of eight uh, concentrates every eight weeks, which is very high. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, almost all of them, 90% had received EPO, and uh, one-third had a high EPO level. So the results were 42% uh, a transfusion independence with a median uh, uh, duration, uh, Kaplan Meyer, of, 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 because some of them have uh, limit follow up of 85 uh, weeks, and 29% uh, achieved the, uh, the secondary endpoint of 24 week transfusion independence. And uh, HIE, which is the international, which is called, which, which is the erythroid response, which may include. Uh, transfusion independence or an improvement in transfusion rate was obtained in 68% uh, uh, percent of the patients. Now, in a subset of the patients, uh, 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 the uh, 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 patients with excess blast, we could evaluate the, the uh, PR or CR, I mean complete or partial response, and indeed it was achieved in, 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 those, in, in a certain proportion of those patients who could be valuable for this endpoint. Uh, transfusion independence, this is the, the, in green, in particular, the patients who achieved a 24-week uh, transfusion independence, uh, 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 transfu and many of them with the arrow are continuing to respond. And as you can see in the right uh, 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 curve, uh, 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 in the right plot, uh, all but one patient had a reduction in transfusion rate, although not, not all of them uh, uh, fulfilled the, the, the criteria for eight-week or 24-week response. 
What can be said also is that the drug was generally well tolerated. They, uh, initially with the metastat, there had been some concerns about toxic uh, uh, liver toxicity, which were not found. Mild uh, liver toxicity was seen. Cytopenias, which uh, thrombocytopenia and or neutropenia was indeed seen in about 60% of the patients. They were reversible, uh, uh, so but, but significant. And, um, and interestingly, patients with worse prognosis, although they remain low risk, but with worse prognosis such as abnormal karyotype, like trisomy 8, or even worse karyotype, tended to respond better to, to imetastat in terms of transfusion independence, which is, suggests that the drug is promising for, for higher risk uh, MDS. And so in conclusion, uh, we have a eight week transfusion independence rate of 42% in those patients resistant to EPO, and 29%, 24, uh, 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 20, uh, in the transfusion independence rate in 24 week, uh, with a median uh, duration in responders of about 20 months, and uh, a response rate of 68%. Uh, and uh, indeed, the transfusion independence uh, rate was seen in all sub subtypes and even better in intermediate risk patients. And uh, 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 telomerase levels uh, uh, were, and h uh, levels were more reduced in responders as compared to non-responders, so it may be an interesting uh, biomarker. Uh, and as I said before, apart from cytopenia, no new safety signal was identified. And so based on those results, there will be phase three uh, 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 um, uh, a study comparing a metal stat two to one versus placebo starting in the next few months in 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 worldwide, especially in Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's uh, the most interesting study. Uh, one of the first, I think, uh, focusing on telomeres, right? Yeah. Do you have any other examples in hematology where this drug is active? It, yes, it's, it's active in, in, in uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms, including uh, myelo primary myelofibrosis, where some results, interesting results have been seen. So yeah. more higher risk uh, my, m myeloid disorders. So that's the reason why in high risk MDS and potentially even in AML, it could be interesting, at least in combination. Questions, please. Yes, here. <clears throat> Uh, Neil Osterweil with Hematology News. How specific is this drug? Um, in other words, will it, will it have an effect on other uh, on telomeres and other cells? And you know, if so, what kind of later off target effects might you see? I, I think it's unclear. Even the, the mechanism of action on, on, on uh, erythropoiesis is unclear. I mean, it's been uh, studied in particular by Ron Hoffman and, and colleagues on, on megakaryot poiesis, but on erythropoiesis, I mean, it's, it's so, we, a lot has to be learned there, yeah, obviously. And then why, why originally was the study in erythropoiesis? I mean, what, what prompted it? Well, I, I mean, initially the study was, was all comers in, in low-risk MDS, uh, and so as, as apparently, well, it was shown that those who responded were mainly those who just had received EPO, which is real life, and, and no DEL5Q, so that's how, you know, uh, based on the results uh, of a small number of patients, we increased the cohorts in, in that particular subset. Okay, thank you. Further questions, please. So could you elaborate a bit more on the effect, the side effect on white blood cells, neutropenia and platelets? Were there patients that had febrile neutropenia, got fever, got infections? <laughs> patients that started to bleed? Did they need no, 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 transfusions? It, it wasn't, there were very few episodes of infection, uh, uh, two to three, well, but well, I think two patients were hospitalized for, for febrile neutropenia uh, and very few required to play the transfusion. Okay. It's more grade three, and but but it's significant. I mean, okay. it's significant. Okay. And it's also striking that you see a significant effect on the disease itself in terms of CRs. Yeah. So are you also planning to combine this uh, anti-telomere drug with other effective drugs in MDS? I think the first step will be to study high-risk MDS as a single agent, of course, then to combine, including with hypothetical agents, etc. Right. And you are talking about starting a phase three trial. Yes, that. How would that look like? What would be the control arm? It it, it will be a placebo uh, con, uh, placebo uh, 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 because, uh, as usual, transfusion independence being the, the primary input. We know that even in the placebo uh, arm, there are often some. So uh, I mean, agencies have required a phase three study yes. uh, f based on transfusion independence in low risk MDS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 